Here are some reasons why, in my opinion, it makes sense to invest in emerging markets. Although, as you'll see, it comes with some caveats. First of all, there is the high growth potential that they present. Over the long term, companies in emerging markets have tended to grow faster than those in developed markets. I always like to throw in this stat, as I think it's quite interesting. Emerging markets make up between 10 and 15% of the global market capitalization, but they contribute to more than 60% of the global GDP. So there is a huge disparity in terms of market cap versus their contribution to the global economy, which means that there is plenty of room for that market cap to grow. Therefore, it makes sense for us to be positioned to take advantage of that growth, because when China or India has some great gains, you'll end up missing out. China in particular should be paid close attention to, because just to remind you that it's the second largest economy in the world, and one that some say could overtake the US in 10 years time. At the moment, the outlook for emerging markets is centered around China's economic rebound, given that it accounts for 35% of the emerging markets universe. China is an important driver of EM growth, so now that the economy is slowly reopening and restrictions are being lifted, it will really drive growth in that market. For example, saving rates are at an all-time high in China. This is money that is going to filter through the economy as people start going out and start spending. Recovering China growth will also have significant ramifications for commodities, particularly copper. For example, you've got electric cars that rely on copper to be built, which will lead to growth in that area. You've also got some interesting developments happening in Vietnam in the IT space, which is gaining market share because of low-cost labor and the ability to move up the value chain as the world digitalizes. This all means more growth in the export business. So there are a lot of interesting opportunities across the board, not just in China. This being said, it should be noted that economic growth and investment returns have proven to be unrelated. So if you invest in the highest growing economies, it doesn't necessarily mean you'll earn the highest returns. Evidence suggests that countries with strong economic growth have historically had lower stock market returns. The reason could be that as new businesses emerge to meet the demands of a growing economy, if earnings grow but lots of new businesses start or existing businesses raise new capital, earnings per share growth, which is what matters for stock returns, will rise less due to earnings being spread across more shares. A nice anecdotal example is China actually. Despite massive economic growth by any measure that you can think of, the Chinese stock market has delivered substantially lower returns than international developed market. However, that's not necessarily a reason to avoid emerging markets markets, but it's something to keep in mind to manage your expectations. Another factor that makes emerging markets an attractive investment at the moment is that stocks in those countries are trading at much cheaper valuations after a long period of underperformance relative to developed markets. And there are other factors at play too. For example, there is low inflation in these markets at the moment, which means that policymakers in these countries are more flexible. And actually, inflation in emerging markets has proven to be less sticky, unlike the developed world. Then there is a possibility that EMs will avoid the recession because the ability of governments to stimulate the economy in these countries is stronger today than in the past. So if we're going to see a global recession in 2023, the growth gap between emerging markets and developed markets is likely to widen. And lastly, an important thing to consider is that the US dollar, which is the main world currency, is probably not going to be as strong this year as we've seen in previous years. That will be positive for the Asia and emerging markets due to the exchange rate, as many emerging markets, governments and corporations may take advantage of a weaker dollar to borrow money cheaply and at a more favorable exchange rates to finance domestic growth initiatives and budgetary needs. This being said, things are not as rosy as they seem because there is a lot going on in this country. So I think you should be familiar with the risks that come with investing there. But before we look at them, do me a favor and drop a like. This really does help out my channel. Challenges in these markets are heavily due to governments and policy makers that are using non-markets mechanisms to try to normalize things. For example, for countries like China, there is a lot of government control. There's been a recent and crackdown on tech firms and education firms, there are issues around the property market and generally a lot of question marks about the influence of the Chinese government. Broadly speaking, poor regulations, corruption and unstable leadership contribute to the risks of investing in emerging markets. At the same time, emerging markets are reliant on international capital flows from private businesses for example and can be more sensitive to changes in global financial conditions, particularly in the US. So if the economy takes a bad turn in developed markets, it can limit the amount of foreign investment that flows into these countries and could lead to lower expected market returns. Now, the most important factor to consider here from an investing perspective is that emerging markets are a wild ride, but if you're prepared for it, they can be a great diversifier. This table shows how emerging markets have done since 2008. It really shows that they're an unstable asset class, so keep that in mind. For a practical example, if you were to allocate 100% of your portfolio to emerging markets and invest £10,000 or dollars in 1995, your money would have grown to 44000 
thousand, but the price swings would have been significant. Now, in terms of how to invest in emerging markets, there are two ways to do it. First, if you're an individual stock picker, you could just look at the companies in these areas and invest in the ones that you think will outperform. And second, if you're a passive index fund investor like me, you could simply allocate a portion of your portfolio to an emerging markets index fund or ETF. For example, for only 0.22% per year, the Vanguard FTSE Emerging Markets ETF, ticker symbol VFEM, gives you exposure to over 2,000 companies from countries like China, Taiwan, India, Brazil, etc. Although the index includes 24 countries, China, Taiwan, India, and Brazil account for around 74% of the index. Some of the top holdings include names such as Alibaba, Taiwan Semiconductors, the Chinese giant Tencent, and so on. Another good emerging markets fund is the iShares MSCI Emerging Markets ETF, ticker symbol SEMA, which costs only 0.18% per year. This one is an accumulation fund, meaning that it reinvests its dividends automatically into the fund. But there is also the distributing version of this fund with the ticker symbol IEEM, which will pay out the dividends. Similar to VFEM, its top holdings include Taiwan Semiconductors, Alibaba and so on. But you also get a large exposure to Samsung, which you don't see in VFEM. Reason being that the emerging markets index that this fund tracks is provided by MSCI, which uses different classifications for what is considered an emerging market country. For example, they classify South Korea as an emerging market, hence the inclusion of Samsung in the index, which won't appear in the FTSE Emerging Markets Index. There is some debate as to whether South Korea is an emerging market or not, because it's got a GDP per capita level similar to a developed market. Also, it's quite a concentrated tech-heavy index, and the country has close economic ties to China, so it's benefiting from the reopening there. Vanguard also has the Emerging Market Stock Index Fund, which costs 0.23% per year, and it also tracks the MSCI Emerging Markets Index. But as the name suggests, it's an index fund, not an ETF, meaning that it's traded differently. It's also worth noting that the MSCI Emerging Markets Index tracks only 1,400 stocks, whereas the FTSE 1 includes about 2,000 stocks. So it's slightly less diversified, but you do get exposure to Samsung and other stocks from South Korea that are not in the FTSE Index. In terms of past performance, neither of these two indices has done very well in the past 10 years, returning about 2% and 4% on average. In fact, emerging markets saw their worst performance in the last decade since 1920. In terms of how much to allocate there, the easiest way to figure this out is by looking at their market capitalization. As it stands, emerging markets account for about 10% of the global stock market, so this is a good percentage in my opinion. In fact, watch this video next to see how I build what I think is the most optimal investment portfolio for 2023 and beyond.